Hey everyone, today we're going to build and deploy a Solana program on chain. This program is going to have a backend connected to a front end with a wallet adapter. And how we're going to do that so fast is using a scaffold that is already created for you. So we're going to open up our terminal and type in the command to generate the scaffold. And that's going to be npx create Solana dap. Okay. And we're going to name this YouTube tutorials. Okay. And now you can customize this framework um, with next node or react. We're going to click on the legacy template. The reason behind that is just Solana is actively developing a new Solana web three JS. So once that is live and everything is worked out, I'm going to update this video using the newer templates, but right now we're going to stick with the legacy ones. Um, so if we do legacy, we're going to do the tailwind counter. Um, and this is just going to have a counter program for your backend and then have everything connected on the front end for the counter. So this is going to install. We're going to speed up the installation just a bit and then run through how to deploy and test out the project. Okay. Now the project's created, we're going to CD in the to the directory that was just created. So we're going to do YouTube tutorials. And then open up the code for that. Okay. So here you can see we have an anchor directory, and this is going to be where your backend lives. It has all of the smart contract code and everything needed to run and deploy it. Um, here in the librs file is where your core code lives for the smart contract program. Um, so you can see all the instructions that exist for a counter. You have close, decrement, increment, initialize, and set. And these instructions live within your counter program. And this declare ID is the public key of your program that's going to be deployed on chain. So this is what comes out of the box with the template. I'm going to have another video linked on how to actually customize this and create your own counter program within this scaffold. But for now, we're going to run with the counter and test it out. So now that part is all of the backend, all of the front end code exists in your source directory, and all of these components are going to be properly connected to all of the instructions that exist on your backend. Um, and then when we have the other video linked here, it's going to show you how to also update the front end to connect to your new instructions that you created in your custom anchor program. So now that this is all generated we're just going to go back to our terminal and we're going to install and then run on our localhost so we're going to run pnpm install and then pnpm run dev and get this running on our localhost Okay, so let's open up our local host in our browser and see what the scaffold actually looks like. Okay, so this is the UI that you get with your Create Solana DAP scaffold. The homepage is just going to be standard um, with every scaffold. It has just GM, your new Solana app, and then it links to a lot of useful resources within the Solana ecosystem. You have your docs, faucet, cookbook, stack overflow, and the developers GitHub. I would recommend just exploring through all of these links um, just to dive in as deep as possible into the Solana ecosystem. Um, now on the next tab, it's going to be your accounts. And this account is going to be the wallet that is connected to your application. So here you can see this is my wallet address. If I click on the wallet, you want to make sure that you're connected to DevNet since this program is deployed to DevNet. So if you are, you can hover over the account. It's going to say DevNet. If you're not, you can click into settings, scroll down to developer settings, and then turn on testnet mode, and that will flip you over to DevNet. So now that your wallet is connected, um, you're going to need Sol in the wallet to be able to ch test out this program because you'll need Solana for gas fees. Um, so you can see that I already have some Sol here. If you don't, you wanna airdrop some to yourself. So you can just click this airdrop button and it's going to send some Sol over to your wallet. 
Now let's actually see the program. So this is the counter program. It's the program that comes out of the box with the counter template. Um, and this is the anchor program that I showed you earlier in the librs file where it has instructions like set, increment, decrement, etc. So you can see because this is deployed on DevNet, anyone can interact with the program. So this just continues for pages and pages of a bunch of different counters that have been created by different developers. So we can create our own. If you hit the create button, it's going to call the create instruction on this program that was deployed on DevNet. Your wallet is going to pop up. I want to hit confirm to confirm the transaction. Once the transaction has been sent, it's gonna have a pop-up to link you to Explorer. You can see on this Explorer, you wanna make sure you're connected to DevNet since that's the cluster everything in this example is running on. And it's going to show the transaction that you just submitted on DevNet. And you can see if we scroll down, um, our program was successful and I successfully created a new counter. Okay, now I wanna just like interact with one of these counters that exist. So you can see this counter is set to one. If I hit increment, my wallet is going to once again pop up to confirm the transaction. So I'll hit confirm. And then now you can see the counter just incremented to two. Um, so that was another successful instruction that was invoked on DevNet with this program. So that's pretty much how everything works. Um, now, uh, since we didn't actually deploy to DevNet, it was already deployed to DevNet. I'm going to show you how to deploy to your local cluster. So on Solana, there are multiple clusters. You have localhost, which is a test validator that is running directly on your computer. You also have DevNet, which is your DevNet environment that exists that anyone can interact with. And then you have TestNet, which is kind of mainly used for network engineers, um, just testing more of the network side of Solana. And then you have your mainnet beta, which is our mainnet for Solana, which is where all of the real funds exist for programs. So typically when you're developing, you want to work between DevNet and localhost. Localhost allows you to configure your environment a lot more easily than DevNet, but DevNet DevNet allows for multiple people to interact with the program. If you wanted to have multiple people interact with your local host, you would have to set it up with ingrok and then expose your RPC. So it would be a few more steps, a lot easier just using DevNet. But let's go through how to set up our local environment and deploy this locally. So we'll go back to our terminal. If you already, we can stop this and then just clear things out. If you already have your Solana CLI and tool suite and everything installed, um, you're good to go to just run one line of code. If you don't, I would check out a video that I'm gonna link here of just how to get everything set up on your computer for your Solana environment. So if you have everything set up, you can just run Solana test validator. And this one line in your CLI is going to spin up a local validator on your computer to emulate the Solana blockchain. So you can see everything's running. We're currently processing new slots and this is running on our local host. You can see for the JSON RPC URL. So now that that's running, we're going to want to build our program and deploy it locally. Um, so you can do all of that simply with some CLI commands. Once again, you're going to have to have your Solana environment set up on your computer. So if you don't, go back to the other video and get that set up. Um, but if you do, we're going to first check out what our configuration is set to. So Solana config git. You can see I'm already connected to my local host. If I wasn't, I would run Solana config set URL and then localhost. And it's going to update my RPC URL config. So now that that's set up, anything that I run with the Solana CLI is going to interact with my local cluster. So now I'm already in my YouTube tutorials directory. I'm going to CD into the anchor part of that. So if you remember, we'll go back to our code. We have this anchor directory. In here is where your actual Solana program exists. So inside programs, counter source is the main file for your program. So once you're in the anchor directory, you're going to be able to run all of the anchor commands that relate to the Solana program. So here we're just going to run anchor build and let that build. And it's going to build our counter program. It takes a while to compile a Rust program. So let's just sit back and let this load. I'll speed it up. Okay, now that it's built, all we have to do to deploy the program is just run anchor deploy. Um, so 
we can anchor deploy. And just because we're deploying, I always like to double verify that I'm on the right cluster. So you can just add the flag provider.cluster and specify your local net. Okay, so you can see the program is deploying locally. And now it is deployed. We're gonna go back to our local host make sure that's running again so let's open another tab here and just cd back one and then run pnpm run dev okay and then we'll go back to our browser and just refresh this and i want to update the connection to local so here it says we're connected to local, but no account was found on the cluster. And that's because this wallet that's connected hasn't made a transaction yet on my local host. So it's already prompting you to request an airdrop. I'm just going to click on that. And then now I'll have some airdrop soul sent to my wallet. Okay. And now you can see this counter has been created. So there are currently no accounts and that's because this is a brand new environment on your local host. Here you can see there are no accounts found and that's because this is a brand new program on your local environment. It's not like the DevNet where multiple people have already interacted with the program. That is how you build and deploy to your local host. The same thing happens for DevNet, but you're going to just want to specify the DevNet cluster rather than the local host cluster. So overall, we have used the MPX Create Solana DApp scaffold to be able to build and deploy a program both on DevNet and your local host and run a local validator on your computer.